Hello everybody. So this is one of those top 10 videos, but I thought let's keep it fundamental and basic and create a top 10 video of my favorite bands of all times. Now, this time I really had a long gestation period with this, kind of like three months. So I had this list and this list was lying on my table and bands were coming in and bands were dropping out and uh, I took my time just to just to be sure and uh, what came out is a quite insane list of bands and uh, quite a weird one but it was it was fun and uh, it's certainly something I can stand behind um, um, of course this would probably look very different 10 years ago and it would it would look very different 20 years ago and so on. So uh, this is just a snapshot in time. Uh, it is the here and the now and uh, nothing else. I kept to only two rules in this game. The rule number one was only, only real band structures are allowed. So it had to be a band, not a solo artist. So um, this basically um, leaves out Frank Zappa, Peter Gabriel, David Bowie, etc. So it's got to be a band, and uh, it's only it, it only bands are allowed that produced more than two albums. So unfortunately, that's a no for Yazoo or Bronski Beat or Frankie Goes to Hollywood, etc. So, but that's all, and we can jump into it right away and uh, just begin uh, with um, my top 10 list of my favorite bands of all times. Number 10 Brand X. Now I think that's a kind of a original or somewhat unique choice and I think that because on the one hand I think everybody likes Brand X I mean, if we're talking about people that are into jazz fusion, um, you will probably not find that many that would hate Brand X. <laughs> it's not a band you usually hate, but it's probably unusual to pick this band in your top 10 of all bands of all the times and of all your life, etc. Simply because they are this type of instrumental band that is very aimless and um, I mean, the entire the entire project is about, um, well, showing your chops and playing long solos. So, um, but that being said, I feel like I keep coming back to this band for years, if not decades, and uh, still they feel extremely fresh to me. So um, even though I've heard these records many times, um, I just don't feel any kind of uh, contempt created by repetition. So um, this probably tells me something. So that's why Brand X is on place number 10. Number 9. The Alan Parsons Project. I know, I know. You think probably they are too demure, too twee, too square and what the hell is wrong with me. Um, but I don't even consider this a guilty pleasure or something. There is just something about this band that I find highly appealing. They are a different type of band. They are kind of unusual. Um, they are not uh, a very typical outfit that uh, uh, could be easily compared with other bands. Um, they never made concerts. Uh, they were, were kind of a very artificially created uh, structure. There's something strangely bourgeois about them, while at the same time I still find there's something very mysterious about them and their music has a kind of a escapistic warmth to it that can just take you to places. So um, I will always remain a big fan of this band because I think uh, they're a very intriguing time capsule to a particular time in my life maybe and uh, in a particular time in music's history. Anyway, number eight. The Yellow Magic Orchestra. Now this band, uh, I have discovered them in 1989, when I was 18 years old. 
and uh, I kind of still remember it. Uh, and um, it's probably like for some other people as well, the beginning of my descent into the madness of Japanese music. <laughs> but uh, interestingly, and uh, while making this list, I of course went through all these bands and listened to their music again. And um, honestly, this band still sounds totally fresh and, and timeless to me. And uh, so no dull effect uh, on my perception of their music, strangely enough. Uh, and so, um, yeah, they certainly deserve this spot. Um, there is just something fascinating about this band. This trio of Ryuchi Sakamoto, Yukihiro Takahashi and Haruo Mihosono. And uh, they were innovators in their time. But uh, looking back, you can perceive it as a form of nostalgia, of course, that's legitimate. But um, at the same time, there is just some extremely charming quality to their music that uh, I find very appealing. And um, it's, not a, it's not a nostalgia experience for me, honestly. Um, in a strange way, um, there is something timeless about them as well, even though I believe most people don't perceive it that way, but they are kind of perceived as, as a band that is kind of deeply anchored in the time um, when they appeared. Anyway, number seven, and now we're coming to a German band, is Embryo. Now Embryo is a band that I've been knowing for a long time and still I feel like I'm kind of discovering their vast uh, discography and um, they are the type of band that kind of checks basically all boxes for me of what I desire or require from an album. So with Embryo it's kind of all there. Uh, they uh, were always kind of the perfect band for my proclivities. Um, and um, so it's pretty clear that uh, they would end up on my top 10 list. Number six, Agitation Free, another German band. So of all the bands on this list, they are probably the one that I had discovered the last. And um, the name of this band was familiar to me for many, many years because uh, it keeps popping up in documentaries or, or articles about crowd rock and kind of the 70s uh, in, in Germany and German music in general. Um, but I never got around to listen to them, strangely enough. And then these reissues started to come out and I kind of uh, grabbed them and uh, thought now it's maybe the time and I was completely enchanted by their music. This is mostly an instrumental band, uh, a band that is kind of uh, on the fence between uh, proto-ambient and um, psychedelic rock with the prog rock twist, I would say. And um, yeah, they're fascinating musicians to create an atmosphere. Um, this is their album Second. And this is their third album called Last. Um, but it is not their last. <laughs> and um, yeah, they're a brilliant band and just something that is um, that I find very, very interesting in these days. So, number five, Jethro Tull. Yeah, this is one of those bands that uh, is uh, it has played a role in my life for quite a long time, as for many people. Um, I think I had to overcome probably a bunch of obstacles to become a true fan of this band because uh, it was also probably the favorite band of my dad and um, and usually people like me are not looking uh, or trying to emulate their fathers so um, at the beginning this was probably more of a hindrance than a reason to like this band so um, they probably had it m much harder than any other band to kind of uh, grow on me if you understand my um, gist and so, um, yeah, but um, over time I became quite an 
avid fan of this group and um, to be honest I dropped out a little bit um, out of following uh, what's going on with this band contemporary I know that they had a like new album last year or something I mean basically it's Ian Anderson solo project with another name um, I will sooner or later check it out um, I just didn't come around it because um, there's just so many interesting music out there so I feel like yeah one day so um, I don't particularly feel too much drawn to listen to what bands like that are doing now but at the same time I kind of feel the need to give them the chance and to check it out but sometimes it takes a bit so um, I usually come to an album like that uh, like one year later or two years later after everybody already talked about it so um, that's that number four yes now for me yes is somewhat a special band in this list for a rather personal reason because when I was 12 years old I didn't care about music at all and uh, in that year my parents decided to emigrate from uh, the Eastern Bloc to West Germany and so we end up ended up in a asylum home um, kind of a building with another 50 or 60 people mostly mostly refugees from uh, Slavic countries like Poland Slovakia Czechoslovakia or, or um, even Hungary and uh, yeah, um, I got a. It was a very checkered experience, but for a twelve-year-old, it was also very fascinating. And uh, I got a Walkman from my dad, kind of a cheap Walkman, cost probably like twenty-five German marks. And um, in those days, everybody was kind of into music. So I was, as a kid, I was running from one room to another where all these guys that also had emigrated lived and everybody had some boxes full of self-recorded uh, BASF uh, tapes and uh, so I was always kind of bugging them and begging them for music and the very first tape I got from somebody because he probably didn't want to listen to it was um, this live album that came out in 1980 um, from Yes called Yes Shows and um, now by standards of pop on rock music, by standards of pop and rock music, this is just noise, honestly, <laughs> if you think about it that way. And uh, so this was the very first music I actually kind of actively started to listen to and uh, didn't make much sense to me. This is kind of reflecting their their second half of the 70s so we have a lot of stuff here from tales from topographic oceans relayer tormato going for the one and uh, it all sounds kind of weird and uh, but uh, the great thing about a child's mind is that it's like a sponge and uh, you certainly do not need to infantilize children uh, musically and uh, so as a matter of fact i was just listening to this album for maybe three or four weeks like every day this was my first tape in this walkman and i was just walking through this through this asylum home and listening to this concert but i mean after after three weeks i knew every every lick every uh, rhythm change i didn't understand what they're singing about but that's not very important with the s because after uh, 40 years I still don't know what they're singing about and so, so um, this is kind of a, an interesting case where this is probably the longest existing band on my kind of a top 10 list either a real one like here or kind of a virtual one in the back of your head and uh, they are still clinging there they still haven't slipped out I mean I may have my own opinions about the type of albums that produced in the last 15, 20, 25 years. But um, yeah, this band is kind of still part of my universe. And um, they are kind of at the very beginning when all those things started. So um, that's why they are on place number four uh, in my top 10 list. Now, before we get 
to the top three positions in my list. So basically the crown jewels of my musical taste. Um, I want to make some honorary mentions. And all the bands that I'm going to show you now, and I will do it very quickly, uh, those bands were on the list for a while, but eventually dropped out. Um, so um, that is not a critique of these bands. Top 10 is a very tiny list, particularly for people like us, wouldn't you agree? So, let's go. The Nice. Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Pink Floyd. Santana. King Crimson. Camel. Return to Forever. Pierre Morland's Gong. Secret Oyster. Aldoom and the Farids. Bruford. South Machine. And Tangerine Dream. Now, in the case of Bruford, you could make the argument that this is an artist's name, actually, and not really a band, but that's nonsense, because if you look at it as a whole, as a lineup, then it's obviously a band structure, and uh, the, the, the band name doesn't matter that much. So, let's get to the top three. Number three. Babazula. Babazula have been around since the late 90s and at this point in time are considered maybe um, the coolest band from the Turkey in existence. They started originally as a pure dub project but over time they always expanded their musical tastes and their ideas and um, certainly evolved into something more. Um, they are a band uh, that has uh, some beautiful idiosyncratic elements in their music, particularly the electric saz playing by Osman Murat Ertel and this type of a psychedelic vibe that he creates and all this improvisation. Um, so yeah, this is a fascinating band from Istanbul and uh, certainly one that uh, it's great fun to listen. This had become a very big part of my musical world over the years. And that's why it's on number three in my list. Number two is Oyukai Conjugate. Now this band was with me in my life for a very long time, probably since 1990 or 91. Um, and um, I remember I was very fascinated by their music when I discovered it. There was just something about them when I listened to them for the first time where I quickly realized that this is just something for my DNA. In their somewhat glorious days of the early and mid 90s, they had very successfully combined ambient music and fourth world music. And most certainly there are some influences, I guess, by John Hassel or even Brian Eno. Um, later, more in our contemporary times, they had moved further to a uh, kind of a different uh, type of uh, experimental and ambient music. Um, they themselves coined it dirty ambient. And um, yeah, that's just a band where I immediately go after any new release that comes out from them and they are still very active I mean this double album here just came out I think a year ago uh, so uh, there's always something new to be expected from them and it's always very innovative it's always 
highly fascinating and um, at the same time the escapistic potential of this music is limitless um, you can sit down and directly uh, actively listen to it and discover all these interesting things that they are doing while at the same time this music has always lent itself to uh, be a very uh, effective and very beautiful background to your daily life. I mean you can work pretty good along this music, uh, you can write, do artistic things, paint uh, they are really fantastic for that. So this is a fascinating band from England and um, certainly a band that has never just for a second compromised their own vision. And uh, yeah, that's why they are top two in my list. And honestly, these three bands are the only part of my top ten list that has not been grinded uh, all the time. This was kind of fixed from the very beginning, which leads us to the number one and those that know me a little better probably know <laughs> what's coming <laughs> and some people are already thinking like oh not again yes uh, that can dance so i have declared this band like my number one decades ago and i'm just a little stubborn that way and um, so yes probably a kind of a formative band for me for a whole kind of reasons uh, probably discovered by me in a very particular chapter of my young, uh, very young life. And um, yeah, I kind of stuck uh, with this band and just followed their own uh, trajectory, uh, their own journey, which has always been fascinating to me. So um, I'm not entirely in this camp that started to be a little disappointed by them after Ion. Um, although it's kind of funny because I believe that after Ion they kind of started to make some proper money um, but uh, at the same time the underground was probably a little dissatisfied with the, with the music because the music started to sound very much kind of like serviceable world music and didn't have this kind of underground uh, grit that uh, had made them so fascinating to the people that kind of listen to 4AD music and underground music in general. So this was an interesting act of balancing their existence uh, between this kind of expectation that you remain this kind of mysterious uh, underground project that does not sell out etc etc. But on the other hand, I don't know, you co-write the soundtrack for Gladiator or something like that. So um, certainly a band with interesting, interesting twists and turns and yet a band that um, was never part of any kind of tasteless popularization in the public. So they, whatever they did, I think they always managed to do it with a high degree of dignity. And um, I like the music they made in the last years uh, probably as much as uh, I like the music they did at the beginning. Um, it is true that this is my favorite period and I'm not the only one thinking that um, but at the same time this could also be a result of uh, the time when this album was released and how old I was in those days and those uh, things probably correlate strongly um, but uh, what can you do? It's a subjective world. Yeah, and um, certainly a band that had a giant hiatus and then returned. Um, but I felt uh, their return was in good form. And um, I certainly do believe that there will be still something, something else coming from them. But um, they are never in a hurry when it, when it comes to making albums. So who knows? But anyway, that was my top 10 list of uh, my favorite bands of all times. Now and in this year or in this decade, um, I cannot guarantee that this will remain like that. For me, music is always a kind of a fluid experience. And um, But what was enjoyable about this project, putting together this list, was that this time I took my time. So um, I've been um, brooding over this uh, for quite a while. 
and um, I think uh, it's a result that I'm quite happy with and um, I hope you've enjoyed it and now I'm gonna run away. Bye bye.